Hello and welcome to Simple Essentials. My name is Emmy, and today we're going to continue that conversation we started about budgeting a few weeks ago. In that previous video, which I'll link below, I talked about the five bank accounts as well as the thinking and the um, mindset that I applied when I started to get serious about organizing myself and my money about two or three years ago now. So in today's video, I wanted to share with you the budgeting template that I have used over the last few years to organize my finances. This is by no means anything fancy. It's an Excel spreadsheet document that I have created. I'm not an expert at Excel, nor am I affiliated with Excel, but I use that to tally up my expenses. And the reason that I do Excel rather than an app of some form is that I really like the physical act of sitting down, engaging with my money, looking at what I spent where and that sort of stuff. So I'll go through that when we look at the template. There are a lot of apps out there that are really helpful. Sometimes you might have one connected to your bank or there are independent apps as well that will help you categorize your spending under you know, groceries or eating out or anything like that. And that can be really, really great. But I personally haven't actually found an app that really works for me. If and when I do, I'd be more than happy to share that with you guys, of course. But this is my personal experience, so I want to be able to stand for anything that I share in this channel. So we're now going to hop over and I'm going to show you the zero sum budgeting system that has really, really helped me get a grip on my finances, use those five bank accounts I talk about in the other video effectively. And I can't remember where I learned this. It was definitely somewhere on YouTube. It could have been Budget Girl or a channel like that that really got me kind of started thinking in this way. And this really is just my version of how I have been doing the zero sum um, budgeting template. But obviously, like I said in the last budgeting video, it's a personal thing. It's kind of like cooking from a recipe. If you like the template, but you want to change it around or remove certain lines or change the way it looks, absolutely do that. It's kind of like if you're cooking and you don't like a particular ingredient, don't cook with that ingredient. Make sure that it works for you and it, it works for your finances. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. Before we dive into the template itself, I wanted to share three really simple principles that are very important when you start getting used to budgeting. And the first one is usually the one people struggle with the most, which is to track all of your spending, and I mean all of it, for one to three months. You can track this digitally using the template I'll share with you, or you can do it on paper if you prefer that. However you do it, it's important to do it ideally for more than one month if you can, only because some months of the year, like for example December leading into the holidays, will usually spend more than we would on the average month. So by tracking it for more than one month, so two or three, it will give you a bit of an overview of your spending throughout sort of the year. Naturally, there will be some months that are a little bit more expensive for a range of reasons, but that's why we have savings accounts so we can plan for those expenses ahead of time. So the first principle, track everything that you're spending and then use that information to set a realistic budget. So a realistic budget is basically your total income, whether you are single or you live in a relationship. So the total income that you're working with minus anything you're going to save and any particular savings goals that you have. And obviously your spending or your the money that you use to live and things that you choose to spend money on. And Number one and number two can be done sort of in tandem, but it's usually helpful if you're brand new to budgeting to start with tracking all of your spending first and then doing the budgeting. All of this will be covered in the template I'll share with you as well. And finally, you want to get in the habit of following up weekly using either my budget template or another budget template that works for you. The reason you want to do this weekly rather than monthly is that it will be way easier to track what you've been spending your money on and it will also be a lot less overwhelming because I know from my own experience if I would have sat down at the end of the month and looked my, at my entire bank statement and all my receipts I would have most likely been so overwhelmed that I wouldn't have done it in the first place. So make sure that you have a weekly date with yourself whatever morning, evening, lunchtime, whatever works for you when you have a little bit of time to do this you'll find that you'll get through it way quicker than you think. Now let's dive into the template itself and put all this into practice. 
So on your screen here is the entire budget tracker. So this is, I normally use this with one tab per month. So if you go to the blog post below, you can download the Excel and the PDF version of this template if you like. Feel free to copy this, clone it and change it however you need to change it. So I am going to zoom in in just a second and start going through the individual categories. But just briefly before we start, here on your left you will see the budgeting column. So this is basically the money coming in, the money going out and the money that you're saving. And on the right hand side you have the weekly tracker or daily tracker. However often you want to go in and update this document is totally fine, whatever works for you. But this is essentially, if you don't have an app doing this for you and you want to use the hands-on method that I prefer, you just go in here every couple of days or a minimum every week and you put in how much you've spent on groceries, eating out, coffees, transport, etc. So these categories up here, other, groceries, social, transport and health are all categories that I'm tracking in my spending over here. I also have a little uh, box up here saying last updated. So that's the date of that month that I was last in the spreadsheet updating it. You can obviously, if you're a whiz at, <laughs> at Excel, you can probably automate a lot of these things. I'm not particularly great at Excel, so this is a very manual but very simple way that I chose to do it. So if you know how to do it better, absolutely go ahead and do that. That's totally fine. I also want to flag that any numbers you see in this tracker are just example numbers. This is not my budget. I am super comfortable sharing my method with you guys, but I think personal finances is uh, something that shouldn't necessarily be all over the internet. So this is an example budget only, but I trust that it's easy enough for you to look at this and understand kind of what I mean. So let's dive into the budget side of things, which is over here. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Oops, that's quite big. All right. So if you could focus your energy here on my screen on the left hand side. This is probably a bit easier to see on a computer, but feel free to follow along on your phone and I will talk through the different things here. So firstly, we're going to look at the budget column. So the budget column is the when you tracked your spending for one to three months, as we talked about just before, you would know roughly what your pay or your salary is and you would know roughly what your bills and your outgoings are including categories like eating out or, you know, socializing fun activities, whatever that is. So I'm going to go through the categories that I used when I got my budget organized and hopefully it helps you a little bit as well. So firstly up here we have the salary component. So when I started budgeting I actually had two jobs. I just put, you know, the salary from one job on the top line, the salary from the other job on the bottom line. You'll see that you have one here for budget and one for actual, meaning that, you know, if you, for example, in job number two or partner number two, if you want to use this, if you're in a couple, you may not actually know exactly what you're going to earn because it might be commission based or something else. So in the budget column, you put like an average estimate. And then in the actual column, you put what you actually got paid. So those are your incomings, right? So the whole principle here is to make a budget that when you have your incoming, so in this case, $4,000 is coming in. And then you want to make sure that you earmark every dollar to go and have a particular job. And that's why it's called the zero sum system. Because as we go through this particular sample budget, the person has $4,000 coming in and then they have a bunch of things going out. We have the rent or the mortgage payment, which in this example is $1,500. We have utilities, electricity and gas, which is estimated to be $125. We've got phone, we've got internet, health insurance, home insurance, car insurance, um, transport. So things like petrol, public transport, Uber, taxi. And again, these are categories that I used when I started doing my budgeting. Um, other expenses like, you know, going to the hairdresser, going to the cinema, basically everything that doesn't fit into another category. So it's totally up to you how detailed you want to be. If you want to have a line item for everything, I found that the other category was useful for me as long as I kept an eye on what I was spending in it. 
um, groceries, which include sort of foods, drinks, consumables. I have a little pet bunny. We also have a, a little kitty cat, Freya, which you might have seen in one of the previous videos. So in my um, budget or in my mine and my partner's budget, groceries also includes like pet food or pet kitty litter and things like that. Social and eating out for me was anything that was like a coffee, lunch, dinner, drinks, anything out, socializing. If you want to include tickets for concerts or things like that, that's totally up to you. If you put it, you put it here or in your other category. So it's totally up to you. Health and fitness, I had things like doctor's appointments, gym memberships, dentist, physio appointments, things like that. So those categories we've just looked at there in black are all spending categories. And then if you haven't seen my video about the five bank accounts, make sure you go back and watch that because the next three posts here are all about that. So here we've got, um, so the person earned $4,000 in total in a month. And my rule of thumb was that 10% of that goes into the Smile Savings account. The Smile Saver is fun things that you are saving up for that you want to do later. Like in my case, I bought myself a really nice bicycle. So that came out of my Smile Savings account. I saved up first and then I purchased the bike. So 10% ballpark, if you can afford it, should go into that if you want to follow the method that worked for me. And then the future fund savings account is big savings goals like a house deposit or something like that. And I put, and I am still putting 20% of anything that comes in into the future fund. So out of the $4,000 this person earns, it is $800 in this example. Of course, for you, if you can do more than that, less than that, however you want to organize things, that is fine. But here is the key now boils down to zero dollars so when we have taken the total amount of four thousand in income minus all the expenses and the savings so these savings here for me i automated them so that the moment my salary came in i got paid monthly that amount immediately went into my savings account so i paid myself first so psychologically for me that was a huge thing and the reason we work with a zero sum budgeting system like this is that now every single dollar coming in has a job. It's not like we don't really know what's going to happen. Of course, things can happen in terms of, you know, we can get hit with an unexpected bill or something else. But in reality, that's really what we're looking to do here. We're looking to give every dollar a job, whether it's saving, whether it's doctor's appointments, whether it's anything else. So that's it. And then finally down here, we've got the emergency fund. Essentially, your emergency fund is the thing you save up for first. If you have nothing in savings, I would really recommend you to do this for peace of mind. So I have an emergency fund with $2,000, Australian dollars that is. And in that fund, I only ever use that for emergencies. I've never had to use it luckily. So it's things like a really unexpected bill, your car breaks down or whatever it might be. And you know for peace of mind that you have an emergency fund. If you lost your job really suddenly, you know that you could pay the rent with whatever was in there. I would recommend that you have a think, you know, between yourself or if you have a partner and you have joint um, shared finances, obviously have a think about what emergency fund amount you guys would need to be comfortable with. And then we get to the actual and then we're actually going to use both the actual column and the weekly daily tracker. So like I said, you know, sometimes we don't know exactly how much money is going to come in. So the February, February actual column here that I'm using in this example is just to put in what actually got paid in the end. Things like rent and mortgage is usually a fixed amount every month. So that's usually not a problem. But for example, you know, in this particular example, I had budgeted for $125 per month for utilities, but let's say it was winter and it was really cold and I had to run the heating more, the electricity bill might be a little bit higher. So in this example, the actual for the month was actually $135. The phone is usually a fixed amount per month, but it depends what plan you have. But for this example, let's say that that will be 40. The internet, we are fairly sure that it's going to be $50 again. Health insurance, again, a fixed amount. Uh, home and contents, 20. Car insurance, 40. Again, this is examples only. 
Now, and if this is a bit overwhelming, feel free to pause here, but I just want to share the entire method that I used and exactly what I did. So I would sit down every couple of days and I would update my weekly or daily tracker over here. So the amount here in the transport column, 6615, that's really just what I've been tallying up over here as I've gone along week on week. So for example, let's say that I had gone and gotten petrol now for $30. Um, that is now added to my weekly total tracker. So let's add up what that now is. So I'm now sitting at $96.15 for my transport. So 96.15. And you're starting to see that I'm getting close already at the hypothetically 15th of February to my $120 a month budget. And then that's exactly what you do. So when I sat down weekly, I would literally just add up the costs in this tracker over here and add up the total in the February actual. So I could see as the month was going along how much I had spent and where I was sitting. So I've updated all the different categories here, transport, um, gifts, hair salon, groceries, social and eating out. The only one I haven't put in yet is health and fitness. So let's go over here, health and fitness, so far spent $50. All right, so let's add $50 here. And then obviously my savings was automated. So I've saved the $400 to smile and I've saved $800 to my future fund. So here we go. Now I have at the 15th of the month when all my bills and other things are paid, I have $264.46 left. You will also see that I may need to change a little bit um, how I'm spending that money because I thought I was going to have $1,000 from my second job, but I only had in this example $800 actually paid at the end of the month. So I will need to be a little bit mindful that maybe, you know, I need to cut down on the grocery budget um, to compensate for those $200, or I might stop my eating out spending and say, yep, I'm going to save those almost $70 um, for to make up for the gap that both my electricity bill was a little bit higher and I got a little bit less paid. But the beauty of this is when you're going through this on a week by week basis, it's quite easy to see how you're tracking and how much you've got left. And if you get hit with a really unexpected bill, you can dip into the emergency fund or if something really serious happens and you go, no, I'm gonna not save a single dollar this month to smile activities, I'm going to have to use that money for something else. If at all possible, when you have a gap like this of $210 in this case, I would really recommend that you adjust your spending rather than saving less. It is easier than we think when we have a goal to go, how can I live on a smaller grocery budget than I'm used to, to make sure that my money stretches a bit further this month? Or can I stop eating out for the rest of the month to just make sure that I stay within budget? So it's all up to you because every time, and this took a while for me to realize, every time I did not save for myself and my future, I was robbing myself of a great future experience or peace of mind. So try to kind of adjust with yourself, you know, do you need that money or that experience now or would you rather have it in the future and just make sure that you're really clear with yourself. But that's essentially it. I know that this is a fairly big template. And you might look at it and go, I'm not really sure, Amy, it all feels like really big and overwhelming. Just in that case, get started with this stuff over here. Start tracking your spending, tracking the money that comes in and track what you are spending money on. You can add as many categories as you want here to, you know, to the ones that I've used. But you will be amazed that when you start to have regular sit downs with yourself, I used to sit down minimum once a week and bring up this spreadsheet, go through my um, expenses and it started to give me great results very, very quickly. And I will share in a separate video how this system and how my partner and I were actually able to save significantly because last year in 2019, we actually spent almost four months in Europe whilst not working. And it was an amazing experience. And using this system actually made me 
able to do an adventure like that with doing no work during that, those four months. In the next video, we're going to cover decluttering and the seven step challenge that I talked about in my last decluttering video. So I look forward to see you then.